Hello game fans, welcome to the Steam Chamber and welcome to the ninth episode of Greenlight Highlights. We've got another six Greenlight games for you to look at today. Uh, next week we will have another six hopefully, however we will also be trying something new. We will be doing a new video where we look at one Greenlight game in more depth and we will hoping to be making this a regular feature and depending on views we'll decide whether we decide to keep that or if that takes off a bit more and is a bit more popular perhaps then we'll drop this or perhaps we'll run both at the same time. However, moving on, the first of the games we're going to look at this week is called Arcadian Axe. Now Arcadian Axe is a single player and local co-op arcade shooter which is going to be available for PC and Mac. There is a demo available for this one so we'll link that as always just check below. This is a really interesting looking little 2.5D, well, no, it's not even 2.5D it's a 2D and 3D neon shooter which has got a mix of not only 2D and 3D graphics but 2D and 3D gameplay. Now this game is going to come with full controller support from the start and is going to have, as well as the really nice neon look, it's going to have classic original 8-bit inspired music throughout the game. This one's also really on the quite cheap side as they've already said that the maximum price will be $2.99, so a couple of pounds as well. Ultimately this game is a really nice looking game and it's the graphics that are going to sell this game. However, the gameplay does look really tight as well. Go check that one out now. Okay, the next game we're going to look at this week is a very, very different one. This one is The Novelist. Now, this is quite an interesting game and I expect this to be getting a lot of buzz very soon. Uh, the Novelist is a game about life, family and the choices we make according to the dead. The game focuses in on whether a family can achieve their dreams without pushing away each other. It focuses on a novelist called Dan Kaplan who's struggling to write the most important book of his career, but whilst also trying to juggle his work life with his family life. So much in the vein of The Shining, the family take themselves away to a remote home for the summer rather than the winter, as in the case of The Shining, in order to try and focus on family, but also to try and finish his book. Unaware to them, it, they are sharing this house with a mysteriously ghost presence, which happens to be you. So in the game, you are required to read through the family's thoughts, have a, experience what the, their interactions, try and make note of what going on in their lives and what the choices they make and then you have choices to make yourself you have to choose how you're going to intervene and what you're going to do however you are not allowed to be seen and you're never allowed to let them know that you are there or that you are doing these things you are trying to choose the best results or rather choose make the best choices to get the best results for the family now this is a really interesting one, it's something that's quite different and I'm always keen to try and push games that do things very differently and this one most certainly is that. It's got a really really interesting sort of cell shaded aesthetic. It's cell shaded but with quite its own unique look at the same time, it looks very much like a uh, it's not particularly comic booky. it's quite sketchy, it's quite an interesting looking game. And it looks as though it's going to be quite a deep and quite immersive atmospheric game. And this one's already got a little bit of a buzz in the comments section, it hasn't been up a lot online for too long, only a couple of days. However, I do believe that this one will get a very lot of buzz in very near future. Right, the next game is Son of Nor, which is a really interesting looking third person action adventure game. 
which is being made for Windows, Mac and Linux and has single player as well as up to four player cooperative play which is both online and local. Now instead of using weapons in this game you use spells and natural abilities like telekinesis and pyrokinesis and there's a lot of people in the comments talking about the relative similarities between this and the Jedi Outcast games. It's got a very very similar aesthetic and some of the gameplay element gameplay elements are similar because of the telekinesis. Now there's some really interesting features about this game. The way you can work together cooperatively is really interesting such so they give the example of you might come across a large boulder blocking the way and you alone will not be able to leave, lift it with your telekinetic abilities however if you're with a friend the two of you can combine your abilities and lift much heavier objects which means that once the game is finished that you could actually have areas of the map that are inaccessible during single player and can only be accessed by people who are playing with others online which is a really nice and interesting element i really like little things like that it's a different way of doing things also they had another example of you can charge an item that you throw at an enemy so that it explodes when it hits them, sort of um, Gambit style from X-Men. However, this charge isn't particularly large. It's, it's doesn't do, it, it will do quite a bit of damage, but it won't necessarily kill an enemy. However, if at the same time your friend fires another object that isn't charged at that object when it explodes, the kinetic energy will be transferred and that causes a much much larger more devastating explosion which is a really interesting way of doing things actually it's quite a different way of doing things and i've never seen anything done quite like that way now the game itself isn't actually finished yet it's still on kickstarter it has 12 days to go and it's got about half of its funding however it does still need more as for whether it will get passed or not on Kickstarter, I really don't know. However, a lot of these games do tend to jump up towards the end. Two Brothers by Brian Allison is another Kickstarter game. This one was actually successfully funded quite a while ago and reached 270% funding. However, it wasn't asking for a huge amount. This is a single or multiplayer local co-op action adventure rpg done in a 8-bit slash 16-bit game boy style with very much that greenish game boy look to it however this one has quite an interesting gameplay element when you die you are taken to an afterlife hub where the game actually has a bit of color uh this and this sort of realm of the dead is a colourful and mysterious place where you can explore to find clues and then interact with characters who have died within the game's stories, sometimes even bringing them back to life as well. If the player wants to return to gameplay they can jump from the edge of the heavens and get back into the action straight away. Now this is a mechanic they say that it's vital to the gameplay as sometimes interacting with the dead is just as important as interacting with the living and it actually often requires the player to intentionally end their session in a game over just to cross over to the other side which is another really sort of interesting little twist on a classic gaming feature and a really nice way of doing things differently. As I say, this one was very successful on Kickstarter, so I have no doubt it would be successful on Greenlight as well. However, there aren't a huge amount of comments as of yet, and it has been up for over a week now. So please do go and give this a look if it sounds like your sort of thing. Now this one is yet another successful Kickstarter game. This one is still actually got 12 days to go and yet has reached 286% funding. So perhaps if you are thinking about funding this, perhaps you could go and look back at Sons of Nor instead, as this one clearly has all the cash that it needs. This is a Towns slash Nomeria style game in which the in which you control a settlement and you start with procedurally generated terrain and then you start to build your village and build a city uh, using 
and your settlers. But unlike Towns and No More here, it's done in more of a voxel style, very much in the style of Minecraft and also 3D Dot Heroes in terms of the character design. Now there's also another game very similar to this in works at the minute called Timber and Stone, if you want to check that out. But Stone Hearth does look relatively interesting. It's been up for a little while and it's got a hell of a lot of comments. So I have no doubt that this will be probably on the next green light um, batch of games that have been greenlit for Steam. They've just um, they've just greenlit a few yesterday, I do believe. And I think this will probably be on the next batch because they generally go by comments more so than they do the votes they generally go by community buzz that's why some games can just appear it so quickly on uh, green light now quite interestingly this game is built to be moddable at every level from your city to the people and creatures inhabiting the world and the game will also ship with the tools in order for you to make your own customizations to the game straight away and to also share them with friends ultimately this game is less uh, about making a settlement and more about city building and city management so when you're just starting out it will be very much like Nemoria or Towns however once you really get going it will have more akin to SimCity there are some really interesting elements that they've added as well such as the choice of how you want to make your city whether you want it to be like a conquering empire or a trade hub or some sort of spiritual city but there are also things like boss fights as well in the game as well because as your town becomes more wealthy and prosperous, you'll risk attracting the attention of titans, which are huge monsters who are looking to attack wealthy cities. This one is doing some very, very familiar things, but in some very different ways and putting them together. And I can see why it's been so successful with its funding. Right, our sixth and final game this week is Daedalus, which is an action shooter. Now, this is a really nice looking top-down 2D shooter. It's got PC, Mac and Linux support, and it has a single and multiplayer, as well as cross-platform multiplayer. Now, it's a nice, really nice looking little game. It's got an interesting aesthetic and it's got an interesting way of presenting the level as the player always faces points up therefore as you turn the map turns with you much like a typical first person game however this could cause some problems such as seasickness with some people and this point has been brought up in the comment section of Greenlight and the developer has already taken these comments on board and has already added an option to have a stationary camera on the game with the player running around instead. Now, there are only 80 odd comments on this game so far and it's only been up for a week or so and yet the developer has already taken on board suggestions which is a really, really good sign. And the dev has actually already put a video up to show off this new control and view scheme which is really nice it's quite an old school looking game and it's a game that I could really see myself playing into the small hours with a couple of friends online it's definitely the sort of thing that you want to play with people that you know however of course it can be played without as well it's also nice to see some sort of old school multiplayer you see a lot of these games sort of like twin stick shooter style top-down games however you don't see a lot of them with multiplayer support so that's really nice to see there isn't a demo yet however the dev has announced that there will be a demo very very soon so do check the link to see if that's up yet right as always thank you very very much for watching the video we do hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please do like comment and subscribe for more stuff it really does help us in the search rankings and it really does help us to let us know that it's still worth us putting these videos together. Thank you.